Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our WSET Bite Size uh, for Beginners session. And um, today we're going to be focusing on an easy guide to choosing wine in a restaurant. And um, the session is going to be recorded, so if you can't stay around for the whole session, then please do feel free to watch again later. And um, if you've got any questions during the session, please do pop them in the Q and A box, um, and we'll try to answer them if we've got time at the end of the session. Um, we've got an entire bite-sized series available also on our events hub, so if there are other subjects that you're interested in, please do take a look on YouTube, WSET events hub, um, and also on our wsetglobal.com website, there's a whole list of other events and other talks that we're uh, doing uh, between now and Christmas. Um, so just to introduce myself, my name is Rachel Webster, I'm the Business Development Director for EMEA here at the WSET. Um, I've actually been here for 10 years now. Um, I have my diploma, my WSUD diploma, and I'm a certified educator. Uh, prior to working at WSUT, I worked in drinks retail for about seven years, so very much used to serving customers and supporting people choose wine for their dinners and other events. Um, so I've been working in the industry now for about 17 years. Um, today, I am joined by Nathaniel Morales, um, so welcome, Nathaniel. I'll hand over to you to introduce yourself to everyone. Hello, everyone. I am Nathaniel Morales, a member of Institute of Hospitality, and uh, previously worked in Shangri-La Boracay Resort and Spa, the number one resort in the Philippines, located in number one island in Asia, and uh, also a task force bartender in Sharala Vilingeli Resort and Spa in Maldives. And now currently working as a floor manager in Ting restaurant, restaurant located in 35th floor of the Shard and previously a senior sommelier. Wonderful, and the Shard um, and the restaurant there is one of the nicest views known to man apart from yesterday in the fog, Nathaniel, what you were talking about. Thank you. Um, so today, um, we're going to look at the basics of um, how to choose wine in a restaurant. So we're going to be focusing on what um, a sommelier is, first and foremost. We're also going to be looking at um, navigating a short or a long wine list um, and choosing wine within your budget. We're going to look at food and wine pairing um, and versus personal preference and taste. We're then going to go on to the very basics of wine etiquette and being more confident in a restaurant setting. Um, and then at the end, we're going to talk about um, how to choose wine for a celebration or a large gathering. If you're the person who's been made responsible for that, um, that role, uh, we're just going to make sure that you um, look at all different um, options that you've got in front of you rather, rather than worrying about it. Yes. Um, so first and foremost, Nathaniel, um, you're the expert here. What is a sommelier? So as a sommelier for me, is a highly knowledgeable and qualified professional person working in the restaurants or any, uh, you know, fine dining restaurant as well. So there are chooses, samples, and monitoring the wine stocks, especially the inventory. And they are also managing the updating of uh, vintages of the wines. And they are totally uh, responsible for training uh, plan for the staff. Perfect. And there'll be, um, you'll have lots of different experiences. The sommelier can do um, specific sommelier training and there's WSET training. Um, so yes. you're hugely knowledgeable about all wines from all over the world. Okay, so we're going to go on to um, wine lists. So how to manage wine lists and how to manage um, budget, whatever that is, if you're on a kind of uh, economy drive or if you've got a bit of extra money to spend so we're going to look at how best to spend that um, on wine um, so first and foremost Nathaniel um, should you and if so how do you politely let your sommelier or your server know uh, what your budget is so that they can recommend something within your budget that you're happy with um, and you don't have to worry about them uh, suggesting something that is beyond uh, your budget so yes so, you know, uh, personally, I totally handled more than, and, you know, uh, so in my, in my own experience in, in the restaurants, my suggestion as a sommelier to make sure that you don't spend 
more than your budget is to browse the restaurant's menu, especially the wine list, if you have any celebration. Okay, so you can see the prices, you can see the name of the wines, you can see the uh, vintages as well, the grape varieties. So you can, you know, you can set the budget before you dine. So you can, you know, you can monitor your um, uh, budget, especially if you have like, for example, anniversary or birthday celebration. But if you really don't have time, uh, you can see it, then choose your food first. In my uh, own experience, then if you're not familiar with the wines, you can ask immediately the sommeliers or the servers so they can totally guide you to choose the wine. But um, most sommeliers would be really happy for one of their customers to say, look, actually, I was looking about spending about £50 on a bottle. Um, most all sommeliers, all servers would be happy for you, for you as a customer to give those guidelines. And then they can look um, on that list about some personal preferences, things that you're happy with. Yes. But I think that's a really good tip uh, for someone to, um, you know, we're all, all the same. We always look at the menu, the food menu, <laughs> when we're, before we book a restaurant. Um, but having a look at the wine list as well to see what those prices are so that you're not surprised yes. when you sit down, at, you know, if, if they're quite expensive, then at least you're prepared ahead of that. Yes, correct. <laughs> Perfect. So um, next, um, you can see in the middle picture here, there's a wine list, uh, loads of different um, names of wine, vintages, prices, but there's absolutely no description of the wine at all. So what would you recommend to a customer who's faced with a list like this with absolutely no description of the wine. So if there's if you dine in the restaurant without you know upon opening the menu of the wine and you can observe and you can see that there's no description and you're not familiar, you know, please ask immediately, you know, it's better to ask uh, first before you're ordering because you once you order the wine and then you don't like it, it will be I mean difficult for you and for the service because you need to replace it. Okay, and then you know, uh, you know, if you don't know, you can ask the server, or if there's a sommelier, it it will be helpful, and then they will explain you the taste, the aroma, the intensity, and you know what's your expectation to the wine. So, as a sommelier, we are always available if you need us. And then we can, you know, we can help you so you can enjoy your dining experience well. <laughs> You know, while enjoying the food. Yeah, it's absolutely a sommelier's role to make sure that the customer is enjoying their wine. So you're always happy to to talk through the wines, ask about people's preferences. They might have had a wine before that they remember, um, and sommelier would would recognise what that wine was or grape variety, and obviously be able to recommend something similar on the menu. You've got. Um, so we've got the the last picture. There is. Um, a wine list with a little bit more detail, so a little bit of a descriptor about it. And um, so, do the same rules and regulations about budget and asking familiar or server apply in a non fine dining restaurant? Oh, Rachel, uh, can you mm -hmm. repeat it again? Yeah, does the same do the same rules apply if you're um, in a regular restaurant? Um, you know, would you still encourage uh, customers to ask the staff for advice about the wines, um, or is this something that only applies for fine dining restaurants? I think in my own experience, you know, every time I dine in restaurant, even it's in the regular or normal restaurant or fine dining restaurant, I always ask assistance from the server or assist, uh, of the sommelier. Why? Because you know, uh, it's better to ask every time, and then you know. Uh, even it's not that fancy or like a fantastic and elegant restaurant, it will be the same, you know, same situation because you will, you're ordering your own wine, you know, not ordering the, the uh, preferred wine for you from the sommelier. So because at the end of the day, you will enjoy it. You will pay it as well. So... <laughs> Uh, it's better to, you know, uh, ask every time. For example, if you want to order only per glass, you know, you can inform the server or the customer that, oh, 
uh, it's possible to taste this wine before I order it, then, you know, but if you know the wine, if it's like light bodied, medium bodied, full bodied, you can inform immediately, then they will, you know, uh, get the wine and, you know, you can taste before you uh, order it. Yeah, that's a really good tip because actually if a restaurant does serve things by the glass, um, then it's perfectly acceptable to us to have a, a small taste. We, we would do that quite confidently with beer. Um, actually, you know, a lot of pubs and restaurants would offer you to try a little bit um, before you buy an entire pint or glass. Um, and the same really should apply with wine. There's, not, there's no harm in asking to taste just a little bit if it's served by the glass yes. anyway, because the bottle will already be open. Um, but uh, another thing I just want to reinforce is that in, in most restaurants these days, the staff, the servers, waiters, the, um, those on the bar will be very experienced. They perhaps would have done kind of formal or informal qualifications about spirits and uh, wine and other beverages. So it's always best to ask. The worst that's going to happen is that they don't know themselves, but they will be able to find someone else in the restaurant who can help you. So all hospitality staff are well-trained, able to offer advice on wine and ordering wine. So always ask is my recommendation. Yes, yes. That's the main thing if you are in the restaurant because as a sommelier, you know, we are always you know, happy to help you. Uh, that's why, you know, uh, don't be shy to ask. Excellent. Um, so we're going to move on a little bit to um, food and wine pairing. So something that um, scares a lot of people, but actually it can be really simple. So Nathaniel, I didn't know if you wanted to take us through this slide um, about some, with some tips of food and wine pairing. So for the food and wine pairing is then because most of, most of the restaurants now and, you know, regular restaurants, they offering food and wine pairing as a package, you know, so most of the sommeliers or head sommeliers, they tasted the food and then they select wines or they, they, they select specific wine for the specific food. Why? Because, you know, not all food are suitable for all the wines because Oh, it looks um, like, like oh, Nathaniel, you're back. Sorry, you froze a little bit there, so you might need to repeat. Okay. <laughs> so most of the head sommelier or the sommeliers, they prepare the food and wine pairing. And most of the restaurants and, you know, regular restaurants, they offering this as a package. Okay. So uh, they choose the specific wine for the specific food. For example, if you have, you know, filet mignon, then, you know, they have like, for example, Rioja for that, or you know, light to medium or medium to full bodied wine. Okay. For the fish, you know, it's better to have white wine. For example, if you like Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc, they totally uh, assign that for the specific food. For example, the fish. Okay. Because not all the food is suitable for the wines. For example, if you have, you know, spicy food, then you have like, you know, high in alcohol. Uh, wine and you know you feel like it's burning in your mouth okay so that's why there's a big role as a sommelier to find the specific wine for food okay so we um, on our level one qualification our level one in wine qualification we talk about the basics of food and wine pairing um, and I've got a few tips as well so you've already talked about spicy food and how that's really difficult to pair with uh, wine so absolutely the the um, spice in food makes a wine taste even more alcoholic so selecting something with a lower alcohol um, is usually a good tip when you've got spicy food um, another one that people really struggle with as well is sweet food um, so if you're having pudding sometimes or dessert sometimes you're still going to have your red wine left over from your main course and that's going to taste really dry when you've got something sweet so we always yes. recommend pairing um, sweet dessert with sweet wine as well um, and in a lot of restaurants now you can order a sweet wine by the glass um, and that has high acidity and high sweetness which is a really good balance with the with the dessert um, yes. and my, my favorite one is if you have a really oily food um, so a classic obviously I'm based in the UK so a classic would be fish and chips we're famous for that um, but it can be really oily and really greasy 
Um, so if you're feeling like you want to splurge, then a good champagne or sparkling wine is a really good pairing because the sparkling wine is really high in acid. And it's just like, um, you know, we would put vinegar on our chips to make them less oily. And um, champagne is exactly, it's, it's high in acid, so it performs the same role <laughs> as a vinegar. Um, so that's one of my favourite food and wine pairings. Have you got a, a favourite food and wine pairing, Nathaniel? Yes, yes. We have a food, food and wine pairing in our restaurant because it's part of our package in the room. Mm -hmm. So if the guests book the room, then they can have the package with uh, dinner with food and wine pairing mm -hmm. because and in my experience as well you know even they have a food and wine pairing uh, some of the guests they intend to uh, switch to you know one grape variety or one wine only even though they have wine pairing because that's their preference because we don't need to push our guests to to have wine pairing for example we have a five foods and then five wines so it's up to them that's why as I mentioned uh, we are here just to help you. We just here to assist you. Mm -hmm. And having a, a food um, and a wine pairing menu is a great opportunity for people who don't know a lot about wine to try lots of different things. So it's um, someone else has done the hard work. The sommelier and the chef have worked really hard on putting that combination together. So it's a really yes, nice opportunity. And also, it's there. if you really want to have a different experience in the restaurant, this is the best experience for you mm -hmm. to explore your palate with the different wines. Perfect. Excellent. Um, I always love going um, for those because um, it makes me try something that I haven't had before, which is always nice. Okay, so we're going to move on to talk about kind of really formal settings. And um, so a lot of people aren't very competent in a more formal setting. It might be that they're only going um, for a celebration or a really special anniversary and that normal environment isn't a formal restaurant and um, so what tips would you give them to be more confident um, and to ask for advice so if you are in the formal settings i can advise to you you know relax you know enjoy the moment enjoy the ambience not you know if the sommelier or us as sommelier give you to taste and then you know grab grab the wine you know smell it look and then you appreciate the aroma of the wine. And then if you think the wine is totally, you know, out of uh, range of, you know, in good quality wine or it's faulty wine, you can, you know, politely inform the sommelier that, you know, this is, I mean, in my own opinion, uh, this is not in the right condition of the wine because if you know the wine, then you, you can totally tell easily that this is faulty. So, you know, as a sommelier, we, can, we cannot argue with that. It's your own uh, feedback and reaction. Then, you know, as a sommelier, we can change it, you know, or if you don't like it, we can switch or we can offer or suggest with a different grape variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's like to, even to me, you know, I've been in the industry 17 years. So I always uh, freak out a little bit when uh, the sommelier or waitress, or whoever might be, pours the wine and asks me to, to check. I'm always a bit like, oh, you know, are you, check are you asking me to check if it's faulty? Are you asking me to check if I like it? Um, the answer there is we're just checking, we are, you're asking them to check that it's okay. Um, and that could be that it's not faulty, that it's as you expected rather than if you really love the wine they're not really asking you're not really asking the customer's opinion um but i think as you say like the first statement here is sommeliers are there to help um and if you really do you know if a customer really does have a problem with a wine that they've been served then absolutely they should ask the sommelier or the, the server um to have a conversation about it is it what it's supposed to taste like etc cetera, etc cetera. yes yeah i think um yeah top tip here is you know, you're going out for a meal, celebration, whatever it might be. And there are people on hand to help. Never be afraid of asking. Um, and a good tip, again, that you, you mentioned earlier is to kind of check the wine list before you go. If you're really worried about what's on the wine list and not knowing yes. things. And most restaurants now will have their uh, wine list or a sample wine list online. So you can um, have a look at that and you can do a bit of Googling or asking for friends who might be a bit more knowledgeable about wine. Um, so yes. again, it's about not being scared. <laughs> wine is it's true, be yes. Because most of the restaurants now are, you know, we are in the internet or, you know, 
uh, mobile, you know, you can easily browse their menus whenever you're in the train or in the bus at mm-hmm. home. So you, it's better to prepare, uh, especially if you have, if you have, you know, celebrate celebrating special occasion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's um, good timing, I think, actually, because our ne- our next slide is about the big celebrations and big group um, events. And would you like to go through your tips about how people can prepare best for those big events or those really important events they're they're helping to organise? Sure. So if you have celebrations in the group or like, for example, seven persons or 15 persons, it's better to prepare your budget first so you can tell and you can inform the organizer just in case if you have it or you can inform the restaurant's owner or restaurant's manager. So set a budget, you know, because it's better to have a budget on hand before you you know, book some celebrations. So, you know, you, you can pre-order in advance or if you have, you know, if you have a time to visit the restaurants or the place of the event, you, you can do uh, wine tasting with the food. Just in case if you have, for example, you have like 30 groups or 50 groups or like corporate event, it's better to have food and wine tasting because, you know, uh, it's better to, you know, be prepared and then you can choose the right wines with the right food. And then be, be clear to your budget, you know. So as a sommelier, we can uh, offer you the right wines, but in high quality. Then make sure that, you know, uh, inform your organizer that, you know, if you reach your budget on that day, you know, they need to inform you. So, you know, it's better to have as well extra budget. Yeah, we were, we were talking about this the other day when we were just talking about the content of the webinar. And um, I get asked quite a lot by family and friends to choose wine for a uh, wedding, another celebration. And I'm, my first question is always, how much do you want to spend? Because I don't want to recommend something that's gonna push them over the budget or means that they have to have less wine um of, you know a price that they, they didn't really feel comfortable spending um but yeah i always spend time like looking at that wine list or, or emailing the restaurant asking them specific questions um about the wine because always really happy to to help i think the budget thing is really important because on yes, the yes. night or the day of the event um if you've run out of the wine that's been allocated someone somewhere needs to be able to approve either having more um, or kind of moving to then, you know, customers paying for their own additional wine at the event, whatever it might be. So, yeah, having a really clear budget is, is really important um, and having a few of the staff know what that is so it can be controlled. Um, so you have no surprises at the end of the meal. <laughs> There's nothing worse than being presented with a, a, a bill, a check that is uh, considerably more than what you were expecting. So. I also like your recommendation here of um, asking for a tasting. So I used to work in wine retail. So we do a lot of tastings with people who are buying wine for a wedding, for example. Um, so that's absolutely possible. A lot of your wine retailers now will um, be able to facilitate that. So trying um, a few different grape varieties to see uh, what might be suitable. Restaurants, um, especially for really large events, are happy to do the same yes. um, to give you a, t- a sample tasting of you know, four or five of their wines so that you, you've chosen something that, that you like. Uh, one thing for a wedding or for your own, if it's your own party, I would always say, choose something that you like rather than trying to please all of your friends and family. And yes, yes, correct. You'll never find one wine that suits everyone. So always choose something that you like yourself because you're going to be um, at the party celebrating. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you, be, be yourself in your budget, you know. E, 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 just in case, you know, be be true in yourself. So mm-hmm. you don't need to please everyone because they are there in your celebration or, absolutely. you know, yeah, to, to celebrate, to, you know, to have time to each other, you know, not yeah. to impress that, you know, oh, we, we're serving you expensive wine. Yeah, it's not about that. But, it's about yes. the party and the celebration. It's about, yeah, it's about, it's about uh, time, giving time to each other. Yeah. And, yeah. 100%. I think that's 
my takeaway from today, Nathaniel, is that when you're having a big party or an event, it's about the company uh, rather than the, the wine that's being served. And as long as you enjoy it, then everyone else is going to be having a good time. So. Yes, correct. OK, so I'm just going to recap a few of the things that we've talked about um, today, and then I'll have a look in the Q&A box. So if you do have any questions, pop them into the Q&A box um, now, just while I'm running through uh, recap, and then we'll try and answer your questions. Um, so here, we're just really saying ask for help. You know, everyone now has access to um, formal or informal training about wine. So those who are front of house and hospitality will have that knowledge. And if they don't, they will know someone else in the restaurant um, amongst the staff who does have that knowledge, and they really want to be able to help you. So always ask for help. Don't be embarrassed about what you know or what you don't know. That's exactly what hospitality staff are there to do um, and that's what they love doing so their, their role is to help people so just ask um know your budget we've mentioned this a few times in the yes. I think, uh, particularly at the moment when uh, you know we're just recovering from the pandemic and there's a you know tricky kind of situation with recessions and financial situation at the moment so know your budget know what you're happy on spending check out that wine list uh, before you head to the restaurant so that you're prepared for the prices mm -hmm. um, and then the last bit the most important thing is have fun wine is not supposed to be difficult it's not supposed to be snobby we all love wine it doesn't matter what kind of wine you like um, I used to take pictures of wine I tried to restaurants to say have you got something like this and um, that doesn't matter what it is how expensive it was I liked it that's all that that matters so have fun with wine uh, more than worrying about it uh, when you're going out for dinner it's supposed to be an occasion yeah that's I'm true gonna, no. i'm gonna have a look at the q a box for a minute and um, you carry on talking if you want or um bear with me let me just have a look see what else is in there um yes. oh the first one's a really tricky one and i don't know if i can <laughs> answer that um any recommendation for um food and wine pairing for something that's really bitter uh, like a gourd or something like that. So a food that's really bitter, notoriously difficult to pair. <laughs> Nathaniel, have you got any advice for something that's really can you, can, can you repeat again? Trisha? Yeah, so someone's asking um, how to, what kind of wine to choose for really bitter food. So um, they've given an example of a gourd, but something else might be like broccoli, um, spinach, something that's really, really bitter to taste. What wine would go well with that? I can recommend if they like the wine that's you know crisp, because you know you have, you have a bitter uh, taste from the food. Then it's better to have you know refreshing, mm -hmm. light but crisp. Yeah, absolutely. white wine. Yeah, red wine that's quite bitter already or with a lot of tannin is not particularly good with really bitter food. Um, so yeah, nice white wine perhaps would be something would be better. But bitter food is a really hard thing to pair. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, another question is, um, so if there's no sommelier in the restaurant, how do you choose the wine? Um, we, we kind of covered this a little bit. Like usually in a restaurant, there will be someone who knows something about wine. So always ask. If there isn't, then you've got, <laughs> everyone these days has got Google uh, on their phones. Um, so they can do a quick search, actually, of some of the great varieties on the list if they don't um know what they are or what they taste like so um yeah that's my that's my cheat sheet is always uh, looking on my phone just to to check if it was a good vintage or if it's a good uh, producer or something yeah and it's also too good to you know uh, most of the time you know ask, ask the sommelier you know because um, most, most of the wines that are listed on the menu they know the aroma they taste it Mm -hmm. because we we don't we don't put the wine on the list that we don't know the flavor the taste the aroma so that's why we if you ask us we can easily uh, mention the description of the wine mm -hmm. but Excellent. sometimes it's better to explore as well your palate for example if you see unusual destination for example chardonnay or some reds yeah Ask, ask, the, ask the description from the sommelier, then, mm -hmm. you know, it's good to explore your palate, you know. It's yeah. good to discover new wines in your, yeah, in your list. Yeah, I think as, as well, we mentioned earlier that if, um, if they've got a few different wines by the glass, 
ask to try something that you haven't had. So if you see a Chardonnay, you think, oh, I don't, I don't think I like Chardonnay. Why don't you ask just to try a little bit? Like there's no harm in that. If it's served by the glass, it's going to be open. So definitely do that. <laughs> Yes. Um, I think we've got time for one more question. There are loads of questions on here, so thank you so much. Um, let me just have a quick look through here. There's a question about different apps that um, we would recommend. Actually, I don't use any apps. I just use I use Google um, and some of the retail websites to have a look. So I, I personally don't use any apps. Nathaniel, do you I'm, use any I'm apps? not sure if allowed to mention it here. Well, we can always say that other apps are available. <laughs> so there's an app uh, uh, starting V. So that's a good one because yeah. most of the you know you know wine lover use that app because yeah, you, so can see, Vivino, yeah, you can see you can you yeah. can see or uh, there's one person as well. It's a very popular person uh, rating the wines. Mm -hmm. So on that app, you can see the uh, ratings. Mm -hmm. You can see the flavors. You can mm -hmm. see the uh, you know, uh, other comments of other wine lovers. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the description of the wine and the origin. Mm -hmm. It's a very useful app, actually. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just take a picture of the label and it automatically give you the details of the wine. Yeah, excellent. I think, um, Diego, that was your, your question. Thank you. Um, but have a, have a quick Google. I don't use any of the other ones apart from the one that you've mentioned in your question, Diego. So. Um, I think just one, one last question. I did say that a minute ago. Um, um, a really interesting one. And actually, we, did, we talked a little bit about it, but not a lot. Someone has asked, how do you know, or how can you tell if a wine has a fault? So obviously, um, sommelier server would know if the wine was smelling and tasting as it should. But as a customer, what kind of things should we be looking for? So, you know, if you are the customer in the restaurants, then we pour... A small amount of wine in your glass you know grab it swirl first to release the aroma or the natural flavor of the wine like gives like few seconds like two seconds you know then smell it if you smell a necessary smell like you know wet cardboard mm -hmm. you know like wet wood something like that mm -hmm. you know then taste it first before you give the feedback to the sommelier, mm -hmm. then if you totally, you know, uh, taste it that not, you know, not, you know, for example, not fruity enough, no flavor, mm -hmm. then, you know, smile to the sommelier or smile <laughs> to us, you know, then, oh, I'm sorry, I think this is not uh, perfect, in, in not in perfect condition. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I will pass it or maybe I can replace it or I can yeah. choose different wine. So, you know, but don't be rude, you know, uh, as a customer, don't be rude, you know, because uh, we are here as a professional to assist you, to help you. Then, you know, be polite. Yeah, I think um, it's actually quite, um, so the rate of faulty wine is quite high, surprisingly high, actually. So it's not uncommon to be presented with something. And you were right, like the um, aromas of um, wet, damp cardboard, um, kind of like dead leaves, rotting leaves. Uh, wet dog as well so if it's like a musty yes. doggy smell so those are the key things to look out for to detect if it's faulty um, and like no fruit aroma or anything like that so no freshness so they would be my uh, key tips on that um, I think that is all we've got time for I'm afraid today and um, thank you so much for your questions I'm sorry that we haven't been able to answer all of them um, thank you very much, Nathaniel, for your time today. Really appreciate you um, guiding us through the tricky world of choosing wine in a restaurant. Um, there are um, other bite-sized um, episodes on our event hub page, so please do check those out. Um, and of course, if you've got any questions, then my details can be found on the wsetglobal.com website, so don't hesitate to drop me a line. Um, but thank you very much for coming along and I hope you've enjoyed it. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.